everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilt and Window. I'm so thankful that you took the time to quilt with me today. I'm super excited about our project that we're gonna work on it today. This one calls Winter Village. And I'm hoping to show you the first three houses in this beautiful quilt. And with those three homes, I would like to review with you one-on-one -on -one quilting and just refresh some things that maybe you just a little bit forgot. Oh, let's start on it. Let's see what's in our quilting basket. We have a pattern for this beautiful design and this is an original design that I did a few years ago. In the pattern you find directions for 23 beautiful houses. We're gonna focus on the first three. In the pattern you would find all of the cutting instruction and fabric requirements and the fabric requirements are for two different collection blue sky and something blue and speaking of collection and fabric you can easily make this quilt with anything you have in your stash but if you would like something special we have a beautiful winter blue bundle 14 fat quarters of my favorite blues this would be perfect for this quilt now we're gonna need some light fabric because I'm using lights in my sashings, my uh, sky and the backgrounds and the windows so I chose the winter lights for you for that one. I like the scrappy feel of that quilt so I'm gonna mix my blues and I'm gonna mix my lights so that way that quilt gets a really nice flavor to it. When you are designing your quilt and start choosing your fabrics remember to get a three-dimensional feel to it of the snowflakes and branches being a little bit more in the front of the houses, they have to be made from the darker fabric. So when you open your kit or open your little bundle, pull up those darker fabrics to the side and set them for the applique pieces. If you do not want to cut your own appliques, guess what? I did the job for you already. We have prepared beautiful snowflake packages, six snowflakes in it, three, la uh, three large and three small, perfect for our winter village. Then I also have uh, the blue sky silhouettes in the package you will find two branches and you have two branches on one side of the quilt and two branches on the other side of the quilt as well as your birds and berries oh you're gonna love those low packages they're gonna save so much time for you not to have to choose your fusible webbing and we have them also for my hand applicators. They're called snippets. You can purchase them and they have a quarter inch seam allowance and you can needle turn those edges right under. I recommend beautiful threads from Wonderful. This package calls Diana and has a beautiful selection of blues. With those threads, you will be able to stitch the edges around your applique and add a little flavor into your quilt of nice blues. My favorite ruler to cut this quilt is from Creative Grits and it's my four and a half by 12 and a half ruler. I'm gonna put that right next to me because I'm going to use it quite a bit. Of course, we're gonna need our pins. The patchwork pins are wonderful. And if you want it for your piecing, I recommend 2310 light thread from Orofil. And I do have my favorite Macrotex needle size 70. They're nice, nice and thin needle. I rem remember 101 quilting, fresh project, fresh needle makes the results really nice. So I'm gonna put some of those things to the side and move on to something super special that I have prepared for this uh, beautiful project. Today I want us to focus on only three houses. One, two, three. With those three homes as we're building them, cutting two by fours. Did you notice two by fours? We are going to I'll just refresh our technique and bring it on to snuff. And what I did is I prepare a small kit, just enough for those three houses that I have right here. I also included in this little kit a little bit of fabric for your um, a little border binding and a backing. So we're gonna work from that 
or you can dive right into the big quilt and purchase the uh, moa of the fabric or look it into your stash select your favorite colors and start making the blocks so when i open my kit for my first block i'm going to need two blues one for the roof one for the house so i'm gonna select those right away i like that big print and i love that small little flower wow they're gonna be just wonderful and when i'm choosing my fabrics i follow rule of five big print medium print small print stripe polka dot even if i'm using the same color fabric having different sizes of prints give me a really nice flavor to my quilt so it gets a really nice look to it so i chose those two pieces to start with i'm gonna put the rest to the side not to clutter my table and then i'm gonna go ahead and select one light that light I'm gonna use it for my sky background maybe a window so that is the light that I have chose for myself I'm gonna start cutting my fabrics I'm gonna follow the directions in a pattern and I'm gonna turn this so I can look at the fabric and look at the direction of that flower right here in the pattern you have each block what pieces you need to cut and right here is a list of cutting all that you need to do and that's my first lesson to you use this as your list what to do you know when you go to the grocery store you have a list and you mark things off and you can quickly get in and out that grocery store right here we're gonna do the same thing a I need the two strips I'm gonna cut them from my light cross it off my list b i need a beautiful square i'm gonna cut it cross it off my list so just remember to do that that is gonna help you be nice and organized as soon as i cut my pieces i lay them right next to my sewing machine and create a little area almost like a design wall let me show you the pieces i have cut it already for this block and let's start laying them out so we have a sky that's wonderful i have my a piece there are two rectangle then i have a chimney as i'm laying my pieces right in front of me i right away pay attention to direction of the fabric and everything how it lines up this is going to be my roof and i'm gonna need a square next right to it then let's go for the main part of our little house all you can call it she shed okay I absolutely love that this is the window then we have a, a board in the bottom rectangle on the top and another rectangle right here so what I'm going to do is now I will proceed into sewing once I have my pieces next to me I can go ahead and sew I'm gonna start by putting my thread into my sewing machine fresh needle and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these three strips together with those three strips I can check my quarter inch seam allowance I'm gonna sew this to this right sides together flip it open this to this right sides together flip it open and with those three strips I can check if this is three and a half this should be three and a half if it is oh uh, good for you i am so proud of you your quarter inch seam allowance is perfect if this is a little bit too small it means that your quarter inch seam allowance was too big and you took too much fabric or maybe check your pressing we're gonna press it towards the dark but when you open the pieces make sure they're open all the way okay now if this piece is too big no problem we can always trim it down three and a half by three and a half but also we can adjust so for future pieces we don't have to trim it as much okay i have a feeling by now you have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance and you are ready for our next pieces to be now our next step and put all our pieces together so i'm gonna start by 
Now I take my three uh, rectangles that were sewn together, I place them horizontal with my roof, then I'm gonna draw a line from point to point. I'm gonna start sewing from here straight down. As soon as I finish sewing, I check Oh, I got a beautiful chimney. Perfect. But before I go ahead and press it, I'm going to go ahead, grab my ruler, rotary, and position next to this quarter inch seam allowance right here next to my sewing line. Do a quarter inch seam allowance and trim it. Once I have trimmed, it's gonna look like this. Now it's time to press. I'm gonna push it open and push the seam allowance towards the dark fabric, towards the roof. All right, this looks wonderful. Now it's time for our second square and I'm gonna place this one on this side. I'm gonna uh, draw a beautiful line from here to here. Then I'm gonna make sure I grab my pins, pin it, and pin it right here. Now I'm gonna sew, sew, sew. As soon as I finish sewing, I am ready to go ahead and turn it over. Do you see? I open it up and now I have a beautiful triangle on this side. This time, my seam allowance, I'm going to push towards the light. I'm gonna push it towards the light. Why did I do this? Because I notice if I push both seam allowances towards the peak of my roof, that was very bulky. So I decide to do a little bit of the opposite. One seam allowance towards the roof, one seam allowance towards the sky. That allows me to have a really nice point right here. And the next thing that I'm going to want it to do is, is to sew this to this. This is my sky right there. So when I take my sky and I place it right over and I start sewing from here straight down, it's easier to go over and I can see it exactly where I have to go because I can see my nice point and I can of course pin it right here and it's gonna be nice and easy. So this to this. Then let's look at the bottom of the house. I completed this part already for you. I sew this to this this to this. I push my seam allowance towards the blue, then the sides, I push my seam allowance towards the outside. Let me show you. Look at that. My seam allowances are going towards the outside. Everything looks nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead now position this right like this, sew it, and now flip it open. You're gonna ask me which way to push this seam allowance. Pluses and minuses. Let's see whichever way it works better for you. For me, I notice that those two seams were pushing towards the roof. But then if I push that seam allowance up, I notice I had a lot of bulk on the outside and I didn't want that. Remember, just like here, I want a smooth, easy transition. I push towards the house and that gave me nice and easy transition when I had to sew my next piece into it. And every house I made, right away, in the direction I give you the sashing measurements. So right away, I take my sashing and place it right over, zoom, 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 flip it open and I sew my sashing to every house. As soon as I do that, I can check my measurements, square it up and I am ready for another home. So with first block, we have review quarter inch seam allowance. We have also talked about pressing that sometimes you press towards dark, but sometimes you press towards light if you needed that benefit of a less bulk in your seams. So that's very important. I think we are ready for something bigger, bigger and better. 
and with that we're gonna start cutting our second house our second house is right here and with this one I am excited about this unit this called quarter square triangle unit first lesson in quilting that I have learned was not to ever put bias edges on the outside of my block on the outside of my row or on the outside of my quilt and many times we have bias edges in the quilts when we cutting triangles we can cut half square triangles or quarter square triangles so this one we're gonna do quarter square triangles so all our bias edges stay inside that little block right here and let's see if you can do one of those with me but before we move on to that let's lay out our block so what we have is the sky and again we are going to look at the direction where do I find it on the back of our page on a number four you have house to all the pieces you need are right here and your list is right here so as you cutting what you're going to do cross it off your list I'm telling you if you have to stop for a moment run in a kitchen because you're cooking beautiful dinner and you want to come back back or to your cutting it is so much easier to see oh I already did this I have to do the next thing it is so much fun to do it this way so if you get distracted your list tells you exactly what step to take next we have cut sky now we're gonna cut a roof I got that that is gonna be beautiful then we're gonna go ahead and start cutting our pieces for our barn and we need the top of the door then we're gonna need two squares for our quarter square triangles this I already have it assembled but I'm gonna take you through all the steps in just a moment that we are gonna need the right and the left side of our uh, our garage we are gonna need some beautiful windows I got those and the top and the bottoms rectangle and then we're gonna need a smaller um, rectangle right here so before we go and assemble this we need to make our quarter square triangle unit this part is gonna be super simple we're gonna sew this to this to this we're gonna push towards the dark then we're gonna place this right over zoom 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 flip it open beautiful press towards this solid strip then we're gonna do the same here top window bottom so press towards the dark flip it sew it so this and this together now for this area we're gonna need this quarter square triangle unit and i have prepared one and wanted to talk you through how i make my quarter square triangle units i want to take a little bit time to do that because sometimes this is what it gives us a little bit of a trouble when I'm cutting quarter square triangle units, I can cut them traditional way by taking a square, cutting twice diagonally, select two and select two from different colors, then sew two triangles together, two triangles together, then sew it together. But sometimes dealing with the bias give me a little bit of a headache. So what I like to do is I like to take my squares and if this calls for five and a quarter I'm gonna cut them a little bit bigger. Let's do five and a half today. Let's give ourselves a little quarter inch extra. We're gonna put the two squares right sides together just like this. Then I'm going to draw a line and then I'm gonna sew on each side of my line. I just done this for you. Just sew it and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and just following quarter inch away from the drawn line. Then I'm gonna take a ruler and a rotary and I'm gonna cut exactly on that drawn line. Cut it. All right and I want to just step back for one moment and just show you something. When I'm drawing my line 
I'm not only following point to point, I'm also paying attention to my 45 degree angle that it's snug next to the edge of my square. That gives me double protection and guarantee that I am drawing a really nice straight line. Okay, we took that back. Now we just cut it, okay? Look at this. When I open it, I have two half square triangle units. Fantastic, that was so quick. Let's push the seam allowance towards the lighter fabric. You can push it towards any one of that fabric, but I'm gonna push it towards the lighter blue. If you would have do light and a dark, I would have recommend you push it towards the dark. Here, I kind of favorite this fabric, so I'm gonna push it that way. Notice, push seam allowance towards that same fabric towards that same fabric okay and then nicely press and I don't only finger press I would have taken iron and with round motions right there I would have beautifully pressed it towards this fabric now I'm gonna take those fabrics and I'm gonna put them right sides together those two half square triangle units right sides together matching blue to the opposite blue this to the opposite. Do you see what I just did? Now I'm going to nest it. What that means, I'm pushing it with my fingers that it gets really nice and nested. And I love to put a pin on one side and a pin on the other side. And I am doing them not on the seam, I'm doing them just before the seam. And if you would like to, you can do two pins on each side of the seam, okay? Now we're gonna take a pencil and we're gonna draw a beautiful line from here to here. I just did it. I drew a beautiful line, have my pins in place, and I am going to sew on each side of that line. Then quickly, I can grab my rotary and go ahead had it. I hope everything comes out beautiful and look at this. We have a quarter square triangle unit in no time. I'm gonna take it from the back, open up that center, open up that center, then from the back I'm gonna force that seam allowance to go in all the way around the block just like this. Look at how nice this is gonna look and this open nice now Hold on, it didn't open all the way. I want it to be, oh, now it did. I want to pull those little stitches. See right here, pull those stitches. This looks wonderful. I'm gonna take it to the front. Beautiful, press it. And now, what it is, what it's very important, I'm gonna trim it. I love to trim with my cute little square ruler from Creative Grits. And I know that this unit needs to be matching with this and this was four and a half so I need to trim it down to four and a half four and a half so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna position my ruler right over just like this and I'm paying attention this is the most important part if this needs to be four and a half half of four and a half is two and a quarter Two and a quarter gives me the center. So I'm going to position my ruler at two and a quarter right here. That's the first thing. Then I'm gonna pay attention to my 45 degree angle. Look how nicely it match. Then I check four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a quarter. Super. So I can take my rotary and now beautifully trim it. And once I trim two sides, it's easy from then on. It is just following those freshly cut beautiful two sides and I can finish trimming and I can have a perfect door to my barn. If something doesn't come out right, try it again. And I tell you, if, it, if it's a little crooked and has a little country flavor to it, that's okay, but don't give up. Try it again, and with one uh, one technique like this, you will be making two of those, and you can use one for this garage, 
and we have another one down here where you can use it right here. I am so excited for you. This is going to be so much fun from now on. This is the only way how you wanting to do those quarter square triangles. As soon as you finish your quarter square triangle, you're going to sew it to this rectangle, side, side, push it towards the outside, beautifully press it, sew it together with this part of the barn, add a roof, add a sky, add a sashing, trim it to the exact measurements and we are ready for our townhouse. And with the townhouse, we wanted to learn something new and exciting. So look at this, we just built our garage and we have learned how to make quarter square triangles and we learned how to trim it and make a beautiful unit that fits perfectly with our quilt. Our third house, you would have to pull up another page from your pattern. It's on page number five. And again, you will follow your cutting list. You will mark it off your list, everything that you cut, and you will lay it front of you. So you can go ahead, ready, set, go for our um, sewing. The roof of our last house, the third house, is the same fabric that we use it in our first one. Now for our sky, we're gonna use a light background strip. We have a chimney and we have another low square on the other side to finish that sky. Then the rest of the townhouse is made from a beautiful, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so you guys don't have to look at it, my mess. And I have now side, I have all my units right here, my strips, door, windows, all the strips, all cut, ready, set, go, and another sashing right there. And so what I'm going to do is sew my windows into the top and the bottom blue. This is the other one right here and with this house I want to teach you something that I think it's so much fun. So what I'm going to do first, I sew my pieces together and create strips. Then I'm going to go ahead, place this right over, sew it, open up, push my seam allowance towards the blue, then I go ahead, do the same thing on this side, sew it, flip it open, and I'm ready to put this to this. Now you're gonna cringe just a tiny bit because you're gonna say, how do I match this window to this window, this door to this door, and keep them in a nice line so they're not off? Guess what? All that you need to do after you sew it, you're gonna look at it where the window is and you're gonna gently crease it. Look at, gently crease. Now you're gonna match the crease with the window right here and you can do the same thing. Gently crease it or you can take a ruler and see, oh, my window finish here. I'm gonna mark this so I can pin it right in that area, right in that area so all my windows are nice and straight at that same level. Once you sew this together and in a long strips like this, one of the most important things to do, pin, 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 pin lots of nice pins pull them away as you're sewing and now you will sew this to this this to this this to this and if you're planning to make the whole village add a sashing to it if you decide to stop right now and do a smaller project look at this the kit that we're going to have available will be perfect for a little table runner. So look at this guys, isn't it beautiful? We took our house one, two, and three, and we sewed it together to a beautiful table runner. And now I have prepared in my little kits for you a 
um, your little border so when you open the fabric you're gonna see a sticker that says border on it from this piece of fabric you're gonna cut two strips two and a half by 40 inches long the really the whole length of it and what you're going to do is you're gonna cut sashing uh, border for the left border for the right and from the leftovers you're gonna have a top and a bottom border for your beautiful table runner i also included a binding but before we go to binding we're gonna have to layer with a backing and i have beautiful piece that you can put it on the back put a little bit of bedding in layer with your quilt top and how I would quilt I would stitch in a ditch to start outline my window do some little bit maybe a cross hatch over this roof get some little boards outline what you have beautifully sewn you can even stay a quarter inch away and echo quilt this beautiful design and once you have it done you will add a beautiful binding and this piece says binding and I chose a really nice blue for you this is a perfect table runner to try your little winter village building those houses also you can use this project to practice a little bit of applique you will be able to open your packages and position your applique right on it if you wanted to or if you would like to you can leave it just plain and sometimes I like the plain projects because I can place the beautiful ball of apple on nice vase of flowers and it adds that little color but if you decide to add applique the snowflakes are one of my favorite and I have a feeling once you finish your three houses you are gonna be going and building a whole village but if you want something quick for this holidays look at this one little snowflake if I add to it oh let's take a little one and place it right here doesn't it finish nicely up and balance the beautiful darker blues in it isn't that beautiful and all that I would do is peel away the few, the paper press it down with an iron and I will stitch through the middle right here you want to see the stitching and I did it oh you can make a pillow for your bed I made a pillow right here and notice that beautiful stitching see and many times I'm being asked a question how did I quilt my big quilt I just did an edge to edge and I quilted over the applique no problem there on this applique I use the blanket stitch I have that blanket stitch also over the pillow notice it I use the beautiful threads in blue to give a nice accent on the snowflake because the snowflakes are so delicate I just stitched through the middle so I hope you have enjoyed our winter village with me I brought just few little goodies if you like the pillows we have a pattern called home for the holidays and with this pattern you get all the direction how to make a pillow and I want to show you something new and exciting and before I do that remember our pine uh, table runner if you wanted to you can add some of those pine trees that you have learned in that video and by the way don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because when you do that you get more fun ideas and beautiful videos like this one and the new thing that I want to show you I'm so excited about it this is our newest collection available called Dolphina and it is a full collection of the most beautiful polka dot fabrics from little gingham to big dot this could be a perfect collection for this quilt can you imagine all different polka dots in your houses stunning and i just pulled up few pieces to show you if you want it this is excellent fabric for your background i just noticed in our studio this just came in from delfina this is delightful for inner border if you want to make your quilt bigger and i noticed the blue sky print it is stunning for an outer border if you would like to do that so so many ideas i am so excited that you took the time and wanted to make winter village with me i cannot wait to see what you do and remember 
there's no stopping grab your fabrics you can do it in blue but you can do it in multicolor and maybe make a spring village for me to see in beautiful rainbow arrangement thank you so much for stopping happy quilting and i hope to see you and quilt with you again